herbicide resistance is spreading across the globe. And even though you may not recognize it, once it occurs on your site, you may never get rid of it. This means that one day, your preferred herbicide may stop performing like it used to or not work at all. But herbicide failure doesn't always mean there's a resistance issue. Herbicide failures can also be attributed to things like issues with the application, poor coverage or shadowing of smaller weeds, weed factors like the size of the weed, germination timing and stress, weather conditions like low temperatures, drought or rainfall, particularly after application, and soil factors like high organic matter and surface debris, all can have an impact on weed control. So after you've ruled out all these other factors, the only way to confirm herbicide resistance is through resistance testing. A Bayer representative or university expert can help with that. Herbicide resistance speaks to a weed's natural ability to survive and reproduce, even after what could normally be considered a lethal herbicide dose. When a weed population is exposed to that same herbicide or herbicides with the same site of action time and again, resistance can evolve. But the herbicide itself doesn't cause resistance, so what's really going on? Any characteristic or trait that allows an individual weed to survive and reproduce will naturally be passed on to the next generation, and seeds can remain viable in the soil for many years. In fact, every year, weeds drop thousands of them into the soil seed bank for future populations to germinate from. Through this process, individual weeds that survive the herbicide application then drop seeds with the same characteristic or trait that allowed them to survive. So over time, the herbicide-resistant population becomes more dominant. It's all part of the evolutionary process known as natural selection. The continuous cycle of growth and deposits to the seed bank is the very reason why it's so difficult to get rid of resistance once it's on your site. Over time, you're battling a seed bank that may no longer be controlled by traditional herbicides. But there's hope. Utilizing best management practices, or BMPs, is the key to delaying or even preventing herbicide resistance. And our experts at Bayer Vegetation Management can help you do just that. Herbicide resistance is becoming more and more widespread in crops and in the vegetation management industry. And while it's nearly impossible to get rid of once it occurs on your site, you play a critical role in managing herbicide resistance. Depending on how and when you apply herbicides, you can proactively slow or even prevent resistance before it starts. Step one is understanding two key classifications of herbicides, mode of action and site of action. An herbicide's mode of action explains how an active ingredient leads to the cessation of plant growth. The site of action explains exactly where that occurs inside the plant cells. For the purposes of this video, we'll focus on the site of action. The site of action is the most critical element when it comes to resistance management, because where an herbicide affects weed growth is a lot more important than how it stops weed growth. Now, expecting vegetation managers to understand how every single product works is far from practical. To simplify, the Weed Science Society of America developed a series of groupings to help professionals navigate the countless herbicide options available. Herbicides in the same group that have the same site of action are given a group number. And the group number isn't hard to find. It's often right there at the top of the product label. The key to a successful resistance management program starts by combining herbicides with different site of action groupings. When you don't do that, and continually use the same herbicide, resistance can occur, and the herbicide may eventually fail. And that failure doesn't just affect that particular herbicide, it affects every herbicide with that site of action. That's why it's so important to understand what group your preferred herbicides are in, because alternating brand names alone isn't enough. Herbicide resistance has been documented in some weeds for almost every site of action available to vegetation managers. Here's a summary of some of the known cases of herbicide resistance by site of action. You can see here that indazoflam or esplanade 
has no documented cases of herbicide resistance. And with smart management efforts, you can help make sure it stays that way. But what are the best practices when it comes to herbicide resistance management? It's a good question, and one that's part of an ever-evolving science. When new herbicides with new sites of action were first introduced, they were extremely effective. And early on, the discovery of new herbicides with new sites of action prevented the development of resistance. But as these new discoveries declined, and those original products were used repeatedly, herbicide options became more limited. Then, in the 1990s, experts recommended rotating herbicide sites of action, either annually or sequentially in the same year. Today, rotation has been a common recommendation for many years, and experts believe that rotating does slow the process. But ultimately, the end result is the same. Resistance occurs. Recently, experts from several universities conducted extensive surveys and studies on herbicide resistance, and the results have challenged that conventional wisdom of rotation. They found that by tank mixing two effective sites of action, they were able to extend the effectiveness of both herbicides by 83 times, far longer than by rotating one site of action at a time. It's proof that small changes in your application strategy can make a big difference. And this model shows just how big that difference is. In the original population, you can see that herbicide resistance occurs naturally. After the first treatment, we start to see some key differences. While both the single site of action and the site of action rotation have seen herbicide resistance spread, the tank mix has seen no additional resistance occur within the seed bank. By the third and fourth years, the results are even more pronounced, with both the single site of action and the site of action rotation method seeing strong occurrence of resistant individuals. With the tank mix, on the other hand, herbicide resistance has been kept in check. Here is what the three strategies might look like over time. Using only a single site of action, resistance can develop rapidly. Rotating sites of action every other year slows the evolution of resistance. However, Using mixtures of herbicides with multiple effective sites of action is the most effective strategy for managing herbicide resistance. To build an effective program for your site, start by identifying herbicides that are effective at controlling target or driver weeds. Then develop a tank mixture utilizing two or more effective sites of action. By taking this approach, you can help preserve the usefulness of both products and prevent further spread of herbicide resistance. Make sure to avoid relying on older, less effective chemistries alone, because resistance may already exist, and escaped weeds may continue to make deposits to the seed bank. When resistance occurs on your site, reversing it is nearly impossible, so the best strategy is always prevention. And our experts with Bayer Vegetation Management are here to help you do just that. Herbicide resistance is a growing challenge in weed control, and for vegetation managers, it can feel even more difficult than it does in other industries. That's because vegetation managers have fewer best management practices available to combat herbicide resistance compared to their counterparts in crop production. For example, tillage, crop rotation, and weed seed harvesting aren't feasible, and multiple applications in a year are far from ideal particularly on railroads or sites where access can be a challenge. But there's a lot you can do. Having a diverse weed control program is the key to managing herbicide resistance, and that means not just relying on herbicides alone, but a range of weed management tactics. The Weed Science Society of America has developed some great BMPs that can significantly delay and even prevent herbicide resistance from happening. Here are some of those BMPs vegetation managers should keep in mind. Number one, know your sites and know your weeds, and be sure to understand which weeds are the most difficult to control and most prone to herbicide resistance. Number two, always tank mix at least two effective herbicides with different sites of action. When you're choosing herbicides, 
it's critical to understand if resistance has already been documented on the site. Herbicide resistance has been confirmed with nearly all commonly used sites of action. Here's a rundown. This chart from the WSSA shows all the cases of herbicide resistance. For example, you can see how Group 2 herbicides have more than 150 cases of resistance, while Esplanade is the only effective pre-emergence herbicide with no reported cases of resistance. Number 3. Always apply products at the labeled rates and with the correct timing and application method. Do not cut rates. Always apply at least the lowest effective labeled rate for the weed targeted. Using an herbicide below labeled rates may increase the likelihood of herbicide resistance. This is particularly important when you consider herbicide tools like Esplanade. While Esplanade has a low potential for herbicide resistance, it's extremely important to use it wisely in order to preserve its effectiveness. Number four, trust the old adage, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Pre-emergence herbicides are a powerful tool to attack weeds early in their growth cycle when they're easier to control. But utilizing pre-emergence herbicides alone won't stop resistance. Number five, you've got to get rid of all escaped weeds. Escaped weeds are the primary driver of herbicide resistance because they're the same weeds that may have survived your original application. So keep them from going to seed to help make sure you don't end up with an even larger, more resistant weed population. You can control escaped weeds mechanically or with an effective post-emergence herbicide tank mix. And keep in mind that effective weed control and herbicide resistance management go hand in hand. If you can maintain 100% weed control 365 days a year, then you've successfully prevented herbicide resistance. We're here to help you understand how a smart herbicide resistance management program can make a difference starting now. So reach out to a Bayer Vegetation Management representative today or visit us online.